have uh, approached these four incredible women and asked them for their time to be with us today. And I can't tell you how much that pleases us because these are role models that raise the level, raise the bar for every single rider, male or female. Put your hands together for Alina Myers, Melissa Paris, <laughs> Leslie Porterfield and Selena Moreno. Could you tell us a little bit about you and we'll do a little mic check. We're going to hope that it works for you. Oh. Yeah, how did you get here? I started when I was eight years old out in my dad's track in uh, Stockton. He got me into it uh, at that age. And I've basically been racing ever since. The bikes kept getting bigger and. Uh, I kept getting a little bit faster, and this year I made my pro debut in uh, AMA Supersport, and was the first woman to win a professional motorcycle race in the country in AMA. So, uh, so I'm pretty excited about that, and I, um, you know, I'm here this weekend with Road Racing World in Suzuki, and you know, I'm, uh, I'm glad to be here. Okay, how about passing that mic right over to your compatriot here, Melissa Paris? And uh, I want to tell you a little bit about her because she might brag about herself. This woman, as she was readying herself for the f her first uh, race in the Daytona 200, approached the Women's Motorcyclist Foundation and also said, what can I do to give back to the community? And during uh, a, probably about a six-week time period, she raised over $5,000 for breast cancer research. So we thank you so much for that. I was 20, started racing less than a year later, and um, did a little bit of everything, 125s, 250s, and now on the R6, and um, this was my second year racing at the professional level in AMA Daytona Sport Bike. Had a pretty rough year, so I'm definitely looking forward to coming back next year and showing what I can really do. All right for you. Coming back. All right. Leslie, how about you introduce yourself and then pass the mic over to Shalin. Chalina. I'm uh, Leslie Porterfield. I'm the Guinness Book of World Records fastest woman in the world on a motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah. I, set, uh, I set world records at the Bonneville Salt Flats aboard my motorcycle. I currently hold records in four different classes and am the first woman uh, on a motorcycle, on a conventional motorcycle, to be in the Bonneville 200 mile an hour club. So. I enjoy wow. it. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. My name is Shalina Moreta, and the way that I started riding motorcycles is I was raised on a dairy, and so to work for the parents, we had to learn how to ride a motorcycle to bring in the cows. <laughs> so I was riding by the time I was about four years old. Uh, quads turned into dirt bikes, turned into street bikes, and then I wanted to see where I could go with it, so that turned into racing. I got my race license on my first track day ever two years ago, put myself on the fast track to get out there and I, my goal was to be a professional road racer. And so this year I did my first professional race at Infineon Raceway. I was pumped to qualify and uh, next year we'll see what we can do with the West Coast Series. So, Racing. And what were the bikes you were on? I think we got, most of us can recognize that. Yeah, that's me on my uh, pocket bike and I think I was eight years old there. I uh, rode a PW50 at the same time, um, then I moved up to, to 65s and 80s, and uh, bikes just kept getting bigger. I got 125s, and I was with Melissa quite a few times on those, and I uh, had a blast. Got a deal with uh, Kawasaki when I was 13, and this year I was on a Suzuki Road Racing World Lucas Oil 600. So now you're, you're, I know, having talked to you before, you two have coaches and you know the expense. I think Elena said $3,000 a weekend just in tires. Um, but who, when you started off, who was your riding coach? Um, basically my dad. He'd done a, like some amateur stuff locally up in Infineon, which is cool, which is where I won. Uh, you know, he had some of his first races there too. Um, but he basically has taught me everything. I mean, I've, um, I've heard a lot. You know, I've got a lot of um, help from coaches like Jason Pridmore and Ken Hill, but um, 
you know, it's fine tuning and stuff, but I mean, the basics like uh, how to use a clutch and all that, uh, I learned from him. Good. So you uh, you do a lot of road racing and probably team coaching with your husband. And how does that teamwork work? How does it elevate both your statuses as racers? Um, as far as on track or things that are actually going on at the racetrack, we tend to keep our stuff pretty separate. Both there to do a job, and um, there aren't many jobs you can bring your spouse to, so <laughs> we try to keep that in mind. Um, as far as training, it's just nice to have motivation. I, I get to see every day what the Superbike Champion's doing, so, you know, I, but I don't feel like getting up when it's, you know, this morning I woke up and it was raining out, but I have him on the phone telling me to go out and get a pedal in anyways, and it's just nice kind of having someone to answer to a little bit. We both know what we're trying to achieve, so I think we kind of push each other along. A large fan base. That's got to help, because that probably does what? It, it definitely helps. Um, I don't have the benefit of having grown up in this sport or having um, people in the industry that were like, hey, let's push this girl through. So I find that if you do a little guerrilla advertising, it's a good way to show your sponsors that you can do, do really well by them. Um, I have a lot of sponsors that are happy with even even the exposure that they'll just get off a Facebook post or, or a Twitter or anything like that. I mean, not everyone's tuning in to watch the races on TV every time, and there's a lot that you can accomplish with social media and, and just showing up to events. Thank you. So, it, what I wonder, and I, you have said, Melissa, and I know I've talked to most of you, that, that when you're out on the track, it's really an equal playing field. That's one of the joys of motorcycling is that it's kind of an equal opportunity for all. Uh, but I wonder, and I'm sure it, it must, is it different going after sponsors as a female? Is it harder? Is, is there something that the women's community or the motorcycling community in general can do to help uh, take some of the pressure off you racers as you face these incredible challenges and expenses at the same time? I think all these ladies would agree that being a woman is a huge asset when you're looking for sponsorship. Oh, good. I mean, it's, it's something different and new, and it is the largest growing segment, so people do want to get more women into racing, so um, it definitely helps. Yeah, I think a lot of people aren't used to seeing a girl out there, so it's eye-catching straight up. And so for a sponsor, they're looking at what's going to grab people's eye, what's going to make the consumer look at my product. So that does help. Um, as far as being, can I comment on being an equal playing field? Um, so a lot of people think that it's a totally level playing field when you're on the motorcycles, but if it, if it, if the motorcycle equaled everything, then you wouldn't have everybody bicycling in the morning to be in the best shape possible. Um, as a female racer, you are at a li little bit of a disadvantage because we don't have the muscular build that the guys do so we have to work a little bit harder and if you doubt that go and try a race my first race I almost had to peel myself off of a bike so <laughs> my first race weekend I had high sided my PW50 um, at a dirt track race but um, that was pretty much my only dirt track race that I did not you know for that reason just uh, I got into road racing and then it went from there but uh, I got back up and uh, took third place in my first race out there and um, I had also, at my first road race my pocket, on, a, on my pocket bike, um, I broke my finger that weekend. I think that's, the, that's like the only bone I've broken besides my foot this year. Um, but I got back on and won my first road race. So, um, you know, it's, I don't know, it's your tolerance of pain, I guess. I don't know, after a while, you know, you learn that, you know, crashing comes along with riding and it's kind of, you know, can't really uh, escape it. I mean, you gotta go fast to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, but, uh, it's hard to talk over them, you know, Elena. So if you want to just hold for a second, we'll just... I don't think Victory's gonna provide bail money for that, but it's definitely gonna be Okay, I'll just talk later about it. But yeah, crashing goes along with the whole thing, and I think that, you know, if you can get over that, then you can really accomplish anything. I mean, there is the pain that goes along with it, but, you know, that's part of it, and uh, I love racing so much that, you know, that's not even going to be a factor in uh, 
deciding whether I'm not, I'm not going to race or anything. But you know, I broke my foot this year, and I actually raced with a broken foot in Infineon, and I uh, won my first race on that. So, um, you know, I think women uh, and anybody can do anything they want. Anyone else want to share an experience from uh, a moving dismount and coming back from it? I've been going through about a year of uh, the fallout from what you like to call a moving dismount. Um, I mean, for me, it's all about just rationalizing it away. It could have happened in the grocery store parking lot, right? So, um, you know, all you can do is wear the best gear you can get your hands on, which is what I make a habit of doing. So, um, you know, you just prepare yourself for when things go wrong, and and sometimes uh, sometimes you still come up on the losing end, but I mean, who doesn't like a challenge, right? <laughs> I think it's important to learn from, you know, you learn from your crashes, and uh, it, yeah, when you're pushing the limits, you're gonna crash, things happen, and, you know, I know I've, I, I don't recommend it, it's not a whole lot of fun, I break, I bet, you know, I broke seven ribs and punctured a lung and got a helicopter ride that was kind of expensive into the hospital, uh, but, uh, you know, it, it is part of the deal. I, I get people tell me all the time, I'm crazy for getting back on the bike, and oh, I couldn't believe that I'd, I'd still do, you know, do what I do and, and ride at all, let alone, you know, still go crazy speeds on salt. But I, I think it's, you know, it, it's part of the risk you take. You try to minimize the risk and wear the right gear. Uh, Try to be as safe as possible. Sometimes you're going to crash. Learn from it. Take something from it and get back out there. It's just, it, it really is part of, you know, part of the process, I guess. I totally agree with what, what you just said about um, learning something from it. I think that the most important part of crashing is that you... You take something out of it, you learn what you did so that you can fix it and not do it the next time. And not all crashes are horrible, you don't get broken legs from all crashes. I don't know Laguna Seca very well and I've never ridden in the rain, but on Tuesday I was riding Laguna Seca in the rain and I crashed at 100 miles an hour and I'm okay. <laughs> so, sometimes you just slide and make the best of it. Have some fun while you're sliding, you know? <laughs> Realizing that a woman at one can you describe that feeling for you at that time? Because yeah. when, when you're on TV, you were, you were really, you know, because it was amazing, your first race, and then you're also the first woman, so. Yeah, I mean, like, I didn't expect for, you know, the wind to come, especially that weekend. I mean, things were going horribly wrong. I uh, I couldn't ride more than three laps without getting, you know, shots in my foot throughout the weekend every time I rode. Um, so, you know, the race was red flagged, um, and I kind of won, basically, because uh, the rider who had led the previous lap had crashed, causing the red flag, um, and I actually had crossed the finish line in first um, the lap, it was red flagged. Um, so either way, I guess it was awarded to me, but you know, being there with my whole family there, it's my home track, so uh, the emotions were like going crazy. I mean, I saw my dad cry, my mom was just in tears, and uh, I think the whole family was really, but you know, to realize that you did something that's like, you know, historical is um, truly amazing and uh, I'm pretty proud of myself for it, I guess. <laughs> but the emotions were uh, really crazy, just like tears were flowing and I think I like, I did something weird on the podium, I like hiccuped or something weird, I just, I couldn't even talk, but um, I was just kind of another planet really and, uh, you know, after you come down from that high, nothing uh, is... It's truly better than that.